Okay, so today we're going to talk about how this website, this podcast, this message may not be for you. Go. Hey, welcome to the I Am Podcast, where we answer all the questions about spirituality and inner peace that you ever wanted to ask. Okay, so today, why would we even address the potential for this podcast to not be able to help you, or for you to not be ready for this podcast, or this website, or these messages, or this science that we are presenting that helps bring us towards the Eastern disciplines of inner peace, nirvana, enlightenment, etc. Well, it comes down to this. We have, through the Body, Mind, Spirit 101, taken great pains to present a model that explains the creation of our pain and suffering and the creation of our emotions, the creation of our inner turmoil, so that we can be cognizant of that process in our minds to be able to help remove it from our minds. Because there are two paths, and you can take them both simultaneously towards inner peace. One is a path of practice. One is a path of meditation. It is a path of calming yourself, breathing, getting out and exercising, walking, doing the mind-calming exercises that you know from both a practice and a scientific standpoint will reduce the levels of stress that you have in your life. The second path is one of a reductionist approach where we understand the pain and suffering and where it comes from and where it is created in our minds and how exactly it is created in our minds because at the point that we understand the process of how pain and suffering is created in our minds, we can then break that process, thus thereby reducing our stress levels, etc. Um, here's the, the catch with the second approach. The first approach, you kind of sneak up on it and it just kind of happens to you, although you don't understand why and you don't get the most benefits from it if you're just practicing and not also understanding where the things that are coming in to distract you, how those things are created and how to break those. Because you can be in that meditative state, you can be in that calm awareness mind space and still be then distracted by anger, sadness, fear, frustration, daily stuff coming in to say, ah, oh, I'm going to interrupt your whole process. I'm going to, oh, look at me for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to break your inner peace. So having both approaches is very good, but having the second approach of understanding the process of your mind, the process that creates um, negative emotions, things like that. Here's the problem. We can explain this self system. We can explain this attachment map and we can explain the equation of emotion and how it works. Your expectation and our preferences compared to your perception equals an emotional reaction. When these two things balance out, you have a good emotional reaction or positive emotional reaction. When these two things don't balance out, when your expectation or preference of something is met by a different reality as perceived, a different perception, then you have a negative emotion. If things aren't the way you want them to be, then you have a negative emotion, okay? All those things, that process that we're talking about and that science of creating our inner turmoil so that we can break that process, that is exposing what is called by ancient masters ego, and it used to be called by psychology ego. Um, now it's called sense of self. Basically, ego is the same thing, sorry, is the same thing as this self map. This self map is a scientific way to plot out our perception of ourself, our, um, our, our, our me, if you will. Here's the problem for the third time. This expectation or preference about your whole perception of self is that it not be degraded in value. You want your ego, or your ego wants your ego, 
to be seen as the end-all be-all. You want your perception of self to be validated, to be increased in value. When we start looking at the process of attachments and how they feed into the equation of emotion and how they create negative emotions based on our perception and based on the ego itself, the ego has a problem with that. Our sense of self has a problem with the fact that our sense of self is our problem. And that can help you, or that will certainly subconsciously create negative emotions for you. So in your search for spirituality, in your search for ego reduction, in your search for betterment of yourself, your life, your existence, your inner peace, you will feel negative emotions, potentially, subconsciously. Because you are looking to change the ego. First of all, you're exposing the, the negativity and the evils of the ego, right? You're looking within yourself and you're proving to yourself through reading, through discovering, through understanding that the thing that you think is you isn't really you and it's causing all of your life's turmoils, okay? But in that very moment, you're going to create a negative emotion about that. Subconsciously, you are going to be want to push a, be pushed away from the spiritual path, from the inner peace path, from the psychological improvement path. How crazy is that? So that's one of the things that you need to be wary of. When we're learning about the science of inner peace and enlightenment and you know, moksha, nirvana, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, liberation, awakening. When we're talking about learning about the science of improving our lives, one of the things that you're going to get back subconsciously is a negative reaction. And it's going to want to draw you off the path because your ego is built to say, I am the end all be all. And I am, I need to be validated. I need to be uh, put up on a pedestal. I am the latest, greatest thing since sliced bread. And when we start to learn that this isn't the case and that this thing is actually the thing that causes all of our pain and suffering and all of our inner turmoil, the ego doesn't like it because the ego sets its own expectation and or preference that it be everything. And when the reality as perceived starts to come in with messages that says, this thing sucks, negative emotion is created within you, whether you know it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not. And that will push you off the path quicker than anything. And so during our path of discovery, during our path of yearning for awakening, yearning for enlightenment. I say all that stuff to say this. When you learn every day more and more that this, the ego, your sense of self, your attachments, which by the way is an ancient Buddhist teaching, release all your attachments and you release all your suffering. When you realize that your attachments, your ego, your sense of self, is your problem, just know and be wary. That's going to create negative emotions in you until you get rid of that ego or expand that ego. You know, uh, I believe it was Maharishi that said, there are two things that you can do with the ego uh, on your way to enlightenment or awakening. One is that you kill it. Or two, is that you expand it infinitely. Both have the same effect. Because you either employ and engage and integrate the reality of existence that we are one with everything, we are connected with everything, as quantum science is now starting to prove that we are entangled with everything in the universe and that everything reacts upon us and we react upon everything. When you start to realize that you can expand this into inclusion of all that, then there is no more me 
as it was yesterday. There's the new me, which is one with everything. And or this, the old idea of me, gets killed, period. And there is no more me to contend with. There is no more me that's creating negative emotions. And there is no more me that's creating meaningless attachments. But during that process, just know, you're going to have negative emotions as long as this thing is controlling your life, as long as you still believe that this is you and it's a subconscious thing, you got to get rid of it through practice and through meditation and through awakening and through things that happen in your brain when certain chemicals are released. That's what we're working for. Um, naturally, by the way, you can do it not naturally, but I think it's more powerful when you do it naturally. When you realize that this isn't you, that's when you're liberated. But until that point, until you actually have the experience of releasing this ego into the ether, it's going to rule your subconscious mind and it's going to rule your emotions. Even during the process of learning about your ego, even during the process of learning about your false self, your false attachments, your false ideas, creating all your pain and suffering. As you're learning about that stuff, it's going to resist you. It's going to resist the idea. And so if you're weak, if you are not dedicated to this path, this may not be for you because you're going to be searching for your path to inner peace. You're going to be searching for what is causing my pain and suffering. You're going to be searching for the answers to how I can get out of the ups and downs, the roller coaster of emotional life and be in that eternal bliss that all of these ancient texts talk about. You're going to be looking for that. And then you're going to start to realize that the problem is right here within you and that that problem is going to create negative emotions you're not going to want to see. You're going to be like, I don't, I don't like the way that feels. I don't like the making of the sausage of the negative emotional stuff in my own entity. I don't, I don't like what I'm learning. If you're weak, this path isn't for you. If you're going to surrender to those negative feelings of you finding out the ugliness that exists within you, then this, this path isn't for you. If you're going to fold, when you realize the work that needs to be done to get you from point A to point B, I mean, it's, it's classic denial. You have to first accept where you are and what is going on within you to be able to fix it and move forward. So this one is a path of courage. And so that's why I say this path might not be for you because if you are not courageous and you don't have the capability to stick with it through the negative emotions that you're going to create through your own growth, because of your own growth, because of you seeing the inner workings of the makings of the sausage of your own negative emotions, because you're going to have all kinds of, Ooh, Oh, I don't no, oh, That's not good. I don't like that. Let's, uh, that's, uh, I don't like to see how I create my own. No, no, no. Let's, uh, let's talk about something else. If you're weak and you succumb to that, you give in to that. This path isn't for you. You have to be courageous. You have to look at the ugliness that exists within you, even though you didn't know it. You have to look that ugliness in the face and say, okay, we're going to remove you or reduce your effect on my life dramatically by twofold path, meditation, practice, doing the things that are necessary to help the brain change its plasticity and create an easier way for you to move through this stuff, and then also the second path for you to understand, be able to identify, and be able to nip it in the bud when it starts the process of creating negativity in your life. If you can make it through that, that's a courageous path. That's the, I am going to push through this mud, this muck, this 
awfulness within me, regardless of how seeing that awfulness makes me feel. If you have that courage, then this path can help you. If you don't have that courage and you will succumb to the negative emotions that you feel when you start to reveal the ugliness that exists within you that you didn't really realize exists previously, then you need to stick with the spiritual teachers who will blow smoke up your skirt and fill you with the butterflies, rainbows, unicorns, and tell you that you are one with everything, you are love, you are everything that exists within the universe, but guess what? Without understanding and removing the ego, you will simply be making another attachment to the same old thing that is breaking you and inhibiting your spirituality and your growth and your uh, increasing your inner peace in the first place. You'll simply be putting on another idea of spirituality, of I am uh, everything, I am one with love, I am whatever. It's simply another idea that you attach to this thing that is causing turmoil in your life. The courageous path is to remove it and or expand it infinitely. And that's going to require some work. That's going to require getting in and getting your hands dirty and getting all that junk out. You need to understand this stuff because you do improve your life. When you start talking about shifting your awareness from your ego, from your perceptions and your attachments, then your life starts to improve. As evidence with uh, hundreds of emails that I've gotten on episode six, the me, like anytime you say the word me, put the in front of it, all of a sudden you're objectifying your ego and you're, re you're removing your awareness from the ego. You're removing your awareness from your sense of self into your higher spiritual consciousness, into that other than ego sense of self, that other than ego perception. That makes the me angry. You know, you really hurt the me when you said that. Those little exercises like that, that little tool removes your awareness out of your ego to where you can see this stuff happening. And it does improve your life when you do that kind of stuff, when you do those exercises. So this stuff will help you if you execute, if you include it in your disciplines, if you watch your own mind, if you shift into that space of the observer, it will help you. But you just got to be careful that it doesn't take you off track. Because it will, if you let it. If you are not setting your expectation, using our own little equation, if you're not setting your expectation that your negative emotions may occur, or may pop up in your very search for spirituality or higher inner peace or more calmed mind or more lower stress, if you don't set your expectation that negative emotions may come about what you're learning from your ego, when they occur, it will create a negative emotion that will make you back away from your entire search. But when you set your expectations that you will have negative emotions that are a subconscious process of learning about your ego, then when they occur, these, th these two things balance. Your expectation and your preference about the negative emotions balance with the negative emotions that occur and you feel good about your progress. How cool is that? And it keeps you on path. All right, so I hope this message finds you guys well. Sorry for rambling. I don't have a script or anything. I just talk from the cuff, as it were. And I present this stuff as best I can. I know I'm not the world's greatest guru. I'm simply a guy who's been to where you probably want to be. And I can help you to get there. I'm just a guide. And you will you won't need me after I show you the way there. I'll be a guide that you can discard and then you can become a guide. So, I hope this message finds you well. Again, I hope you guys are having a great week. If you would like to support us, I put up some links 
on the website, right there in the middle, right below the uh, top banner stuff that says, if you want to buy me coffee, you want to buy me lunch, you want to buy me lunch with a beer? Yeah. Or if you'd like to sponsor an episode, if you'd like to give back in some way, those buttons are now available. And I will mention your name and say hi if you do that kind of stuff. Um, and so uh, if you've been one of the lurkers for a while, you've been uh, appreciating this podcast and you'd like to just say, hey, you know, here's a little here's a little love to help you with some bandwidth or help you with whatever. I would certainly appreciate it. Um, because, you know, I don't make any money doing this stuff, and uh, it does cost money, but it's for you. It's for, and ultimately it's for world peace, which is my bigger goal. If we can increase the level of inner peace within individuals, we create a space where we can also then um, develop world peace. And that's no joke, because at the point where we start teaching kids of the future, about their negative emotions and about their fear and about their need to defend the attachment of their uh, nationalism or their political structure or their religion or whatever it is, all of a sudden it doesn't become as important to kill people to defend your attachments. You can live and let live at that point. And that's what world peace is all about. At the point that we spread this message, um, we're that much closer to world peace. And so that's why I do this. And if you want to help out on that effort, I put up the buttons to um, create some donation options for you on the webpage, IamSpirituality.com. Of course, you can uh, get a free book, which also supports us at Audible.com. Audible trial slash IamSpirituality is the link you need there. And I will talk to you guys next week. Peace.